All right, so this tutorial is going to cover how to create a waffle shell structure on any surface in Grasshopper. So we're going to start with a surface, panelize it, and then create this offset uh, structural grid on it. So go into shaded view. This is the, the outline that we're going to follow. Um, the kind of crux of this is the ISO trim component and the divide domain component. So we're going to use those. And again, starting with any surface. So start out, uh, disable this. Start out in Rhino and just model a plane. So you can type plane, create that. And from there, um, we're going to grab that surface in Grasshopper. So double click on the canvas, SRF, bring in the surface uh, param, right click on surface, go to set one surface, and then select it in Grasshopper. Select it in Rhino. Um, and then you're going to right click on that and reparameterize. And we're going to do that um, so that it, when we do our subdivide, it's going to divide it uh, appropriately. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is divide domain. So if this is found under the math section. So if you go to domain, um, there's divide domain squared at the bottom. That's the one we're going to use. So again, you can double click and type divide domain. Just make sure it has this squared icon. And so we're going to plug in that surface to be the base domain. So go from the surface into this I input in the domain. So that's going to be the, the domain. In this case, it's 0 to 1 because we're reparameterizing it. And our number, you'll notice what this does is it takes a domain, divides it. So we want a number in the U direction, a number in the V direction. So just to illustrate this, I'm going to double click and type 12 to create a slider. Plug that in. Control C, Control V to copy and paste it. And this will allow us to play with the number of divisions in each direction. Okay, so nothing's happening yet. We haven't trimmed the surface. So if you double click and type ISO trim, drop that in. So ISO trim is looking for a surface, which will be this. And it's looking for a domain on which to subdivide that surface. So this is the, the crux of this script. We're taking this surface, subdividing it into panels. And those panels, we can parametrically control the number of subdivisions. If I select that surface and type points on, you'll see that I can manipulate it. And it's going to adjust my panels as well. All right, so I have this panelized surface. What I want to do kind of as a high level pseudo code before we get started, what we want to do is take these uh, rectangular subdivisions. What I'm going to do to create that waffle shell structure, something like this, what I'm going to do is offset that edge offset it a certain distance. So that'll be parametrically controlled. So we'll offset it in. And we're going to also offset this original surface. So I'm going to offset this surface so that it's down here. And we see not only the um, offset panel kind of forming the interior of this, we're going to basically have an extrusion that we can um, bake into uh, Rhino. All right, so all of that to create a waffle slab. All right, so I have this uh, subsurface. 
So using ISO trim, each of these is now its own surface. And this alone can be the basis for a lot of different scripts in Grasshopper because each of these is now a panel. So there's a lot you can do just from here. Um, so if you're panelizing a large, um, you know, curving facade or something else that you want to subdivide, this is a great starting point. Okay, so from this, what I want to do is, right now these are surfaces. I'm less interested in the surface and more interested in the actual uh, perimeter line. So I'm going to use this BREP wireframe. So BREP wireframe component. So that'll get me the line work from that surface. So I'm going to plug in my surface into the BREP and I'm going to leave the density as is. And these are now individual lines. I want to join them together. So I'm going to type join, join curves as the component. I'm going to plug that in. And now if I select this component, the join curves, and I bake it, middle mouse click, bake, it'll show that I now have baked each uh, polyline. And it's a closed polyline for each of these. So this is now behaving the way I want. This is exactly what I want to do, because now I have this uh, polyline. It's a closed polyline, and I can offset it, and now I can start working with it. So I have that. I want to offset it inward to create the thickness, uh, actually half of the thickness of my concrete uh, waffle sh structure. Um, so I'm going to do a specific kind of offset. This is called an offset loose. So double click offset loose. So you'll see offset curve loose. And you're going to plug in the curve because it's looking for a curve and it's also looking for a distance. So right now the, dis the default distance is set to one. So it's offsetting outside of that. I actually want it to offset inward. So I'm going to give this a negative number. So to bring in a negative slider or a negative number slider, I'm going to double click. I'm going to type negative, let's say uh, 2.5 less than zero. If I just type negative a number, it'll bring in subtract for some reason. So you have to type negative whatever number less than zero and then hit enter and it'll create a slider with a negative value in it. So the closer I get to zero, that's kind of where we are. So I can plug that into my distance and you'll see that it's now offsetting into my surface because it's a negative number. Okay, so there's that. Um, <clears throat> what I want to do now is offset this entire surface off, you know, kind of in the normal direction of the surface. So what I'm going to do is do an offset loose for the surface itself. So I have to offset my entire surface and then basically do the same operations I'm doing here on the surface. So I'm going to do an offset loose. So offset surface loose. We're going to take that same surface, plug it into the S component. In our distance, this is another slider we'll give it. I'm going to double click and just type 2.5. And so now we can control how far we're offsetting. Right now it's in the positive direction. I can set this to be in the negative direction. Um, right click, edit, and I want my minimum to be negative 3. And it's Grasshopper is using the same units as my Rhino file. So if my units are in feet, this is now offsetting three feet. So I've offset that surface. And what I want to do is 
the same thing we did for this surface up here. I want that same offset for this surface here that we offset. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just select these, control C, control V, copy and paste them. Notice how I left this divide domain here because I'm going to use the same division just with this new offset surface. So now instead of this plugging into that original surface, I want it to plug into the offset surface. Okay, so now I'm doing all of the same things that I did with my original. I have them copied down here. So I'm going to hide all of this because I'm not interested in that, keeping just the, this curve here. And so what I'm going to do now to create a series of surfaces between the two. So what I want to do is basically create a loft between this edge and this edge. And then even though it's not really seen throughout the model, I want to create a, sur a surface between this edge and this edge. Okay, so let's just do that first one, right? So I want a surface between here and here. So going back to our model, that's a surface between this edge and this edge. So I could either loft or Grasshopper has a ruled surface component. So I can double click, type ruled surface. It's a good way to loft a, a geometry when you only have two input curves. So I'm going to input the offset, which is this, and the original, which is that. So what I did is I just created a surface that'll be kind of the bottom of my waffle slab. And that's this. And I also want to create a ruled surface between this offset and that offset. That'll be the inside of my waffle slab. So I can just copy and paste that same ruled surface, control C, control V. But instead of plugging in the original uh, pre-offset curve, I'm going to plug in this uh, offset on the first surface. Okay, so now I have a surface for the kind of inner side of that. I have a surface for my bottom edge. And if I were to just bake the two of these, you'll see that I, I have this kind of interior exposed. Um, so I want to close that off. Um, so I'm going to go back to Grasshopper, and what I'm going to do is create a loft between this edge and this edge. So basically the originals of both of those surfaces. So I'm going to create another ruled surface and connect this joined curve with that joined curve. And if I bake that, that'll give me a nice clean edge. It's also giving me a lot of surfaces inside that I don't need, but it does the job for this. Um, I guess another way that I could do that and avoid all that excess geometry, control Z in Rhino, what I could do is actually just do a um, BREP wires from that original surface, a BREP wires from the offset surface, and loft those two together. So let's do that. BREP wires or wireframe. And I'm going to, because I just need the perimeter. So I'm going to grab that surface perimeter, bring it out, control C, control V, do the same thing for my offset surface. And between the two of those, do a ruled surface. creating that geometry. So these are really the three components that I want to bake to create this geometry. If you'd like to group these together so that when you bake it, you can just bake them and this comes in as one geometry, you can create a group 
and bring in all of the components, flatten it, and bake it. And that will give you this geometry. Um, one thing we're noticing is that not all of the waffle slabs are being created. So rather than using a ruled surface, we can use a loft instead. So that's a simple swap here. We can double click, type loft, bring that in. And instead of the ruled surface, we're just gonna use a loft. So I can plug in the same two components holding shift and that looks a lot better. So this is another method to create that surface um, when we were having some issues earlier. So I'm going to do the same thing for our other surface types. For this last one, we could um, use a loft, but it actually creates um, a problematic geometry. So we actually don't want that. We're going to leave this original ruled surface because that edge was fine. So I'm deleting those two ruled surfaces using loft for our final two. And then holding shift, I can group all of those together. So when they bake, they all bake as one. So that's the tutorial on how to create a waffle slab out of a surface in Grasshopper.